What's up everyone, welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part one of our brand new Flappy Bird series on Scratch 3, so let's get coding. Just finished coding. Here's a quick preview of what you will be able to accomplish at the end of the series. I'm going to click the A key and begin playing Flappy Bird. And as you can see, it assembles a pretty nice Flappy Bird game and I can control the bird with either my spacebar or the up arrow keys. When we finally hit the ground or the pipe, then the game ends. And that's pretty cool. And that's what you will learn to make in this series. For this project, I'm going to be using the Scratch 3 offline editor. But if you are more comfortable using another editor, uh, such as Scratch 2 or the Scratch 3 online editor, by all means, go ahead and do so. Just make sure that you do know to perform some essential features like saving a program, running it, etc. I'd also like to mention that all the files and art that I'll be using in this video along with the code will be linked in the description below. So please check it out and download all the necessary sprites. So with that out of the way, let's get into our actual code. The first thing we want to do is to actually import our background. And in order to do that, what you want to do is to head over to the stage, click on it, and then hover your mouse over this uh, icon which says choose a backdrop. Now you'll see a menu uh, pop up and you want to choose the uh, top of that menu which says upload background and you should have a libraries um, file pop up and you could choose in any uh, file that you want and you want to click on the um, picture which says light background. Uh, now you can delete this original background that was there earlier because you're not really going to be using that. With that out of the way, let's now actually import our sprites. So now you can delete the cat sprite and now within choose a sprite, you want to click on upload sprite and just click on bird.png and a pretty large size flabby bird in pixel art would pop up and now you can scale this to size and I'm going to be using about uh, size 15 and I think this is a much uh, better scale of the bird. Now you'd want to import the costumes of the bird and in order to do that, head over to the costumes of bird and then you want to uh, hover your mouse over this uh, icon which says choose a costume and then click on upload costume. Now you can use the control um, key and uh, check all the three other images of the bird that is bird 2, bird 3 and bird 4 and once you click open you should have all those images pop up and it has done so and that's pretty good. Once you're all set up and ready with your images the next thing to do is actually write your code. So click on the code tab and you want to grab this uh, block of code from the events tab which says when green flag is clicked and this code is going to start only when the green flag is pressed, which is basically going to initialize our entire, um, our entire game. Now keep in mind, we will be adding a thumbnail a little later on, but we will deal with that when time comes. So when green flag is clicked, what we want to do is to initialize a variable called speed. And this is going to control our, our speed in the Y axis. You can also delete the my variable variable because we aren't really going to be using that. Initially, you might want to set speed to be zero because we don't want the move, uh, bird to start moving up or down right away. But we will also change speed constantly because gravity is well going to pull the bird down. And only when we do hit the space bar or the up arrow key does the bird move up. So let's actually get into factoring in all of that. Uh, what I'll do right before that is uh, actually switching the costume initially to be bird because that is the costume that we want to have when the game begins and the remaining costumes will be dealing with the animation when either the up arrow key or the space key is pressed. Now you'd want to grab another when green flag is clicked from the events category and this time round you also want to grab a forever loop. Now within this forever loop you want to have uh, an if then and uh, what you want to have inside this if then is if the bird is above the ground. But uh, now keep in mind we haven't drawn our ground sprite yet so let's actually get into drawing it. To draw the ground sprite, what you want to do is to hover your mouse over this tab once again which says choose a sprite and then click on not upload a sprite this time but paint a sprite. And you can draw just a neat little rectangle or, or a green rectangle if you prefer so that that would resemble our ground. If you want to copy in the exact color that I'm using, it's color 32, saturation 60 and brightness 100. And I also want to set the outline to be transparent before I draw my ground because I don't want a black rectangle surrounding it. So now to draw the rectangle, just make sure that it runs all around the um, uh, x-axis and you also want to center it right at the center. So now that you're done with that, just uh, you know move the ground on the stage to all the way 
you know, right below, which you'd want to do. And then you can head over to the code and grab the saved X and Y coordinates. Now I'm going to be setting the X coordinate to be zero and leaving the Y coordinate as it is, because that would mean that the, um, that the ground sprite is centered and right at the bottom. So grab a when green flag is clicked and you should put that right uh, as your code. And that would be it for the ground sprite apart from naming it and I'm gonna call it ground. Next thing you wanna do is to head back to your birth sprite and head over to the sensing category. And uh, you wanna grab this block of code which says if touching mouse pointer and you wanna change that mouse pointer to be ground. Now before you put that in, what you wanna do is to head over to your operators tab and grab this not and you wanna put that touching ground within that knot. And what this knot is going to do is basically reverse this condition. So if the, bo uh, if the bird is not touching the ground, only then will this particular code execute. So what are we going to, uh, going to do inside this? Well, let's do it right away. The first thing we'll have to do is to change Y by the speed. And you can do that by grabbing change Y from the motion category and putting the speed variable right inside of it. Now keep in mind that when our speed is zero, the bird will not be moving up or down and we do want it to move down. So we constantly need to be changing speed by gravity. And I'm just gonna be setting gravity to be about um, 1.5 uh, units, but keep in mind, you can customize this as you wish. So grab a change speed by, and you wanna change that one to be 1.5 or two, depending on how uh, fast you want the bird to fall down and put that right after that. So now when you hit the green flag, you can see that the bird goes up and that's because we've been changing uh, Y by a positive number instead of a negative one. So uh, just make an adjustment and change it by negative 1.5. So now you can see the bird falls neatly down and that is pretty nice. Now you also want to, uh, want to have the bird move uh, to this particular location or you know this location right at the start of the game because we don't want the bird to start right at the ground before the game even begins because that defeats the purpose. So now head over to the motion, uh, motion tab and grab this block of code which says go to x negative 120 and you wanna change y to be about 80. I think that's a pretty suitable number. So now you can see that the bird falls down and that's pretty nice. So there we are. Once you're done with that, the next thing is to configure the bird's movement on the y axis and that is to actually make it uh, jump up when the up arrow key or the space bar is pressed. So in order to do that, head over to events and grab this block of code which says when space key is pressed. We'll be first configuring this for the space key and then we'll be doing uh, the exact same thing for the up arrow key as well. So when the space key is pressed, what we'll want to do is pretty simple. So the first thing we'll do is to head over to the variables tab and say set speed to um, 17, okay? Now you can change this uh, depending on how high you want the bird to jump. So if you want it to jump higher, then you might want to change it to like 18 or 19 or 20. And if you want it to jump lower, then you might want to change it to about 15 or 14. So that's up to you. Just keep in mind that these are the values that I'm using and those are the values that I used for making my preview. So you wanna set speed initially to be 17. And now you also imported those costumes of the board for a reason, and that is to have the animation. So in order to have the animation, what you wanna do is to grab a repeat number of times from the control section, change that 10 to be four, and uh, just have a wait, a small time lag, okay? I'm gonna make it 0.1 seconds just so that things don't happen too quickly. Now you wanna head over to looks and grab this block of code which says next costume. Now when you actually test this out, now you can see that when we actually jump, the thing works pretty well. Now there is some lag and a bit of stuff that we don't really like, but that works pretty well for our Flappy Bird game for now. So now let's actually configure the exact same thing with the up arrow as well. So in order to do that, duplicate it, and uh, you might wanna change that space key to up arrow since that's our entire point, and this should work out when you do press your up arrow key. Now I'm gonna fix the lag right now itself, so I'm gonna change that to half of what it was when we um, you know, switch costumes, and that's gonna be 0.05 seconds. Now when we test this out, now you can see it's a lot more bearable, and the bird uh, switches costumes much faster, and that is exactly what we want. I'm gonna add in one small bit of code before I wrap up this video, and that is to show the bird when the green flag is clicked, and also hide it when we actually touch the ground. So if you do want to hide it, what you, uh, what you wanna do is to change this um, if then to an if else, and just have this block of uh, this condition right uh, as the if condition, and you wanna have the if as it is, but within the else, what you wanna do is to just add in a hide. So that would be pretty simple, and uh, that would also mean that the game is over. So uh, once we hide, we'll also broadcast a message 
which says game over. To do that, head over to your events tab and say broadcast message one, and you can change that message one to be um, game over. So game over, there we are. So click enter, I'm gonna clean up my code, and that's it we'll be doing for this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like, and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.